I recently visited Universal Studios in Orlando and I thought it would be really fun to show you everything I ate, drank, won and loved in Springfield, USA. So I thought today this would be a more relaxing video as I take you around the park with me while sharing some honest thoughts about this place as a huge Simpsons fan, while spotting any fun Easter eggs as we go. And as someone who grew up watching the show since I was a kid, this place is so surreal to be in. It's literally like stepping foot into the real Springfield except that all of the residents have mysteriously disappeared, almost as if abducted by aliens. But more on Kang and Kodos later. So walking through, the first thing you might see apart from the sign is Android's Dungeon and Baseball Card Shop, which says that it's currently closed because Comic Book Guy is at a convention, which makes it the perfect time to nab some rare baseball cards. But as I'm feeling a bit more like Snake, let's head to the Quickie Mart and see if we can get some goodies. Now this shop is really well done, so much so that I spent some sweet sweet moolah on some souvenirs. Food wise I got Krusty's Clump Bar, Bobo's Gummy Bears and even Farmer Billy's Bacon Chocolate Bar, along with two cans of Duff, all of which are for a really fun and secret project that I will be announcing soon. James, my husband, got himself this cool Simpsons shirt with the older animation character designs and I got myself a pin and a Simpsons photo frame for our office which is also super super sweet. And except for the products, I loved looking at all of the fictional advertisements for the products. There's Crustio ads and I even spied an ad for Chef Lonely Heart Soup for One, which is from the iconic episode Bart the Lover. This game of spotting as many references while boring James to tears was so, so fun. But it has to be done because the attention to detail is incredible. From Jebediah's Springfield statue to Krusty Burger and even the Duff Gardens mascots. It's the seven Duffs! There's Tipsy and there's Queasy, there's Surly and Remorseful! Everything is designed to make you feel as if you're walking through the animated town. Even the bins, or trash cans should I say, all have the Springfield logo on them. The Simpsons has such deep lore and it's so fun trying to spot all of this stuff. And be sure to head around to the side of the Quickie Mart to answer the ringing phone. But my favourite place to visit without a doubt was definitely Moe's Tavern. It looks like it's landed straight off of the show. It's got the exact same windows, booths and pool table right in the middle of the room. It was just also so fun to walk around and look at the different memorabilia on the walls. And behind the bar they even had Simpsons character branded alcohol, like the Sea Captain's Rum and Sideshow Bob's Pruno. And to be honest, I was very confused about what Sideshow Bob's Pruno would be, so I asked you guys on Instagram and a few clever people told me that Pruno is actually prison wine. So that was very clever. But seeing as I didn't fancy any Pruno, I decided to share a pint with Barney instead. And I even had a go on the love tester, which roasted me to hell. <laughs> But anyway, despite this, I could have spent ages here, and I did. I grabbed us a pink donut from Lard Lad, and I got myself a dove and sat in a booth just to enjoy the ambience. And speaking of food, there were a lot of options. There's the Frying Dutchman, Luigi's if you fancy a pizza, and Krusty Burger for hot dogs and burgers. By the way, just look how gorgeous this neon sign is. So, James got the chicken waffle sandwich with tater tots from Cletus's Chicken Shack and I got some tacos from Bumblebee Man's Taco Truck. But anyway, the one thing I was really looking forward to was a flaming mo. And it has to be said that this is probably from one of my favourite Simpsons episodes ever. It just looks so good and it's just such an awesome scene when he makes it. And in real life, the drink did have this flame-like effect, which was done by dry ice being in a little separate compartment underneath the bottom of the cup, and it was really cool and made for a great Instagram picture. However, I am a bit disappointed that it wasn't purple like in the show. This drink is basically like an orange soda, and it did taste good, but in my opinion, to be more in keeping, it should have been like a grape flavour or something. Also, there is a lot of choices for soft drinks in The Simpsons Land. There's Squishies, Buzz Cola and Duff Cans which also taste like orange soda, so why not make this a great opportunity for it to be a cool adult alcoholic cocktail? And when you're done filling up on food and flames around the park, you can find these awesome carnival games. 
I had a go at knocking down some willies where I even got a couple down and this is my husband doing really well on the bucket ball toss. And between us we managed to win some prizes, a pink llama, a plushy duff can and a blinky. And I was feeling very charitable that day, so I even gave two lucky kids two prizes. But I did keep the blinky. Now, I made a joke earlier about all of the characters being abducted, but if you are lucky, you might be able to spot a few meet and greets with the Simpsons family. I just managed to capture this video of Homer leaving in his camper van, which I think is a reference to the season 1 episode Call of the Simpsons. And one detail I loved here is how they've used radioactive drums as the meat cooker at the back of the RV. Now, I am very lucky to say that I went to the Hollywood version last year, and there are quite a few differences. For example, the Hollywood one has a few more locations from the show, like Dr. Nick's surgery, Springfield's vehicle department, and the power plant, and there is also this incredible backdrop behind all of the buildings that has the school and the prison, and you can even see Sideshow Bob escaping, which is a very nice touch. But while Universal Hollywood just has the Simpsons ride, the Orlando one also has Kang and Kodos' Twirl and Hurl, which is basically an aerial carousel that you'd see in other theme parks, except this one has Kang and Kodos, and the branding is absolutely brilliant here. The signage and the ride at nighttime is so, so pretty. I have to say that they are both really great parks, and I like that there are enough differences to give them their own distinct touches, which is great because it gives us another excuse to go to both. As massive Simpsons fans, me and James just love walking around Springfield and taking in all of the ambience, especially at nighttime when all of the neon lights were on full display. And it has to be said that the Dove Gardens bar looked like the place to be. It's by the lake, which is where Universal Studios have their night show. So it would be an amazing place to watch the show while sipping a nice cold Duff or Flaming Mo. Now, I've heard some rumors that the Simpsons land may be closed and replaced sometime in the near future, but I really, really hope that's not true. If anything, I think there's a lot of opportunity to expand it. Imagine if Comic Book Guy's shop is actually a comic book store, or even have a Noiseland video arcade planted somewhere. Either way, I really hope it's not replaced because I definitely can't see Disney ever recreating it in their parks. Now, I just want to say a big thank you to Universal Studios for providing me with a ticket. I honestly can't wait to go back whenever I'm back in the States, which I'm hoping is very, very soon. But do let me know in the comments if you guys have ever been and what you thought of it. And if you haven't been, which place would you most like to go? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.